How you doing guys, welcome to another video. Still on topic 10, volume two, where we talk about classes of organic compounds. Let's get to it. Okay, so volume two, classes of organic compounds. We talk about classes, functional groups, naming some of those functional groups, and then primary, secondary, and tertiary carbons. IB understandings and applications, we talk about benzene very quickly, and then we look at identifying different classes and naming different functional groups. So a functional group is a part of the molecule that plays a part in the chemistry. It's a reactive part of the molecule that's usually not a carbon or a hydrogen. So for instance, the functional group NH2 is referred to as an amino or an amine functional group. Now its class is also an amine, or a, it, it, its class is known as an amine. The chemical will be called an amine. The functional group could be an amino or an amine. Fluoro, chloro, and bromo, well they are all halogens, so their class is described as halogenoalkanes, but their functional group could be called a fluoro, a chloro, or a bromo. Now they're generally named as a prefix, so they get named at the start of the molecule's name. An alcohol, an alcohol has the functional group OH. Now its class is described as an alkanol or an alcohol. That's the class and that's how you need to describe its class. Go with the word alkanol because that's what the IB asks you to use. Its functional group, the OH, would be referred to as a hydroxy functional group. Now, it is generally named as a suffix, so we might have something like butanol or propanol. An aldehyde has a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and then a single bond to a hydrogen. Its functional group is called an aldehyde and its class is known as aldehydes as well. So those ones don't change. It's named as a suffix where we change the last part of the name to al. So for instance, butan, al, propan, al, etc. The ketone, the ketone has a carbon to a double bond oxygen somewhere in the middle of the molecule and it is known as a carbonyl carbon. So its functional group is a C double bond O, described as a carbonyl, its class is known as a ketone, and it changes the last part of the name to own. So for example, propen own. The C double OH group is known as a carboxy or carboxyl functional group, and it's essentially an acid. It's got a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen, and then a single bond to a hydroxy functional group. Its class is the class of carbo car carboxylic acids, and it's named as a suffix as well. So butanoic acid, propanoic acid, etc. Benzene is described as an aromatic unsaturated, unsaturated hydrocarbon with the molecular formula C6H6, and it's a ring structure. The ring has two double bonds, which we are say are delocalized, and there are three representations for a benzene ring. If you are a derivative of a benzene ring, you belong to a class of compounds known as arenes. And if we have a functional group that is a benzene group, it's described as a phenyl group. The terms primary, secondary, and tertiary are used to describe the carbon that a functional group is attached to. So in the first diagram, we have a functional group of a hydroxy functional group, an alcohol, and it's connected to a carbon, which is connected to one other carbon. Another way to think of this is that that carbon that the hydroxy group's on is connected to two hydrogens. That is known as a primary carbon. So in this case, that would be known as a primary alcohol. In the second case, our functional group is connected to a carbon which is connected to two other carbons. Or another way of looking at it is it's attached to a carbon with only one hydrogen. That's known as a secondary carbon and that would be known as a secondary 
alcohol. In the third example, we have a carbon with our hydroxy functional group that is attached to three other carbons or is attached to or has no hydrogens attached to it. That's known as a tertiary carbon, and in this example, that would be a tertiary alcohol. So we have primary, secondary, and tertiary based on either the number of carbons or the number of hydrogens, hydrogens that the functional group's carbon is attached to. If we look at naming some of the halogenoalkanes, we need to employ some of the skills we talked about in the first video. So compounds containing one of the atoms chloro, bromo, fluoro or iodo belong either to halogenoalkanes or halogenoalkanes. The halogen is always named as a prefix, so before the name, and if we have a number of different halogens present, we name in alphabetical order. So for the first one, we have a bromine coming off the first carbon, so it would be called 1-bromo-propane. In the second example, we have three carbons. It doesn't matter which way we number this, so this would be called 2-bromo-propane. That's why it's important that we have the numbers, because we need to tell the person the location of the bromine. In the, in the third one, the name would just be chloroethane, because there is only one chlorine, so it has to be at one end of the molecule. In the second one, we have two chlorines, and they're at opposite ends, so we must use a number to describe that. 1, 2, dichloroethane. Di because there's two chloros. In the fifth example, we have again two chloros, in this case coming off the second and the third carbon, so this would be called 2,3-dichlorobutane. In the final example, we have four carbons, but we have a number of functional groups. So we name in alphabetical order. So we have 2-bromo, 1,2-dichloro, and now we name the longest chain of carbons, which would be butane. There would be no spaces between that molecule, and where we need to have commas and dashes, they join together. If we have an alcohol, the alcohol contains the OH hydroxy functional group, and remember that changes the last name to ol. The functional group hydroxy means that that compound will belong to the alkanol homogular series, which will have the general formula CnH2n plus 1, OH. So here we have a carbon backbone with four carbons and then the alcohol group at the end. So this would be described as butan 1-ol or 1-butanol. It doesn't matter how you describe, either is fine. Here we would have our hydroxide, our hydroxy group on the second carbon. So this would be called 2-propanol or propan-2-ol. The third one on the right hand side, again we have three carbons, this time our hydroxy functional group is on the first carbon, so this would be known as propan-1-ol or 1-propanol. In the fourth example we just have two carbons, the hydroxide group is at the end, so now that would be referred to as ethanol. In the next one though we have a hydroxy group at either end. So in this case, we need to use numbering and we need to say that it has two hydroxyl functional groups. So it will be 1,2-ethan-diol. Or another way to name it would be ethan-1,2-diol. In the, in the final example, we now have three hydroxy functional groups. So this is going to be a triol. We need to say the location of each of those hydroxy groups because they could be on different carbons. So it's 1, 2, 3, pro, 1, 1, 2, propen triol. So volume 2, some top tips. Remember the difference between classes, that's the type of molecule. The functional group is the group of atoms. And then you just still need to practice that systematic naming. The more you can do, the better. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.